Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. And welcome to another episode of the Money Mastermind Show. Tonight we have Kyle Taylor of the Penny Hoarder and he is going to help us make every penny count by telling us about deal stacking. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. And the rest of the Money Mastermind show is, uh, we have another Kyle here, Kyle Prevo of, <laughs> of Canadian. Young and Thrifty. Young and Thrifty. <laughs> See, that's what I, you know, I try to go off script and then like everything else just throws off and I can't think of anything else. Um, that's why I try to write all this stuff down. Uh, <laughs> Peter Anderson of Bible Money Matters, Tom Drake of the Canadian Finance Blog, and Miranda Marquette of Planting Money Seeds. I'm Glenn Craig of Free From Broke. So, back to the topic at hand. Uh, Kyle, can you tell us a little bit about deal stacking, what that is, and uh, you know, why it's something useful the rest of us should know yeah. about? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have to preface by saying I, I'm not one of those uh, those crazy coupon ladies. As, as much as, as much as I admire them, uh, I am I am a lazy saver, and so I, I've but I've developed a few tricks over the years to stacking deals and, and getting coupons really easily, so that I never have to pay um, retail price. So my my tricks are: we all know we should be using coupons, and not not just when we're grocery shopping, but whenever you buy anything. But you can use a number of other stacking things, like, uh, for example, cashback websites, um, like Ebates.com, which will pay you a, a rebate on every purchase you make, um, anywhere from one to 25% cashback. Something that takes like 10 seconds to click click a link, um, and you and you automatically get that cash back um, back in your bank account, which um, is super simple. Um, I'm also a big fan of paying for things in gift cards. Which I know sounds kind of silly, but um, there are a ton of discounted gift cards websites like Raise.com, where if you know you're going to be buying a new TV at Best Buy and you're spending 500 bucks, you might as well buy um, a gift card that's on sale for $450 um, at Raise.com, and it's an instant $50 in savings. Takes you, you know, a minute or two without really even having to think about it. Would you do something like a? Uh, uh take that a step further and buy that gift card with like a credit card for points or anything like that? Yeah, so it's all about putting those little layers all together. So, um, yes, I'm a huge fan of using a rewards credit card on everything, including when I'm buying a gift card. Um, and I, it's such a simple way to um, make sure you're, it's a lazy way of saving. Um, so I always recommend, if you can, if you've got the credit score for it, upgrade your credit card and get one of those that are offering 1.5% to 2% cash back. Hmm. So, so you're all for the saving. You're all for the, the saving the pennies, and you're all for using the credit card, which is not a. Uh, it's kind of a rare combination here uh, for our guests. I think this is a man after my own heart. <laughs> and not the credit card. I, it yeah, it's, it's, I guess that's my dirty personal finance secret. I like the plastic um, for sure. <laughs> um, and, and, and I think uh, a lot of us here do as well. You know, we've certainly had cash people on, and you know, we have we have a little fun with it when we do, but um, you know, we've definitely talked about how we like to use credit cards here for good or bad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not a fan of carrying the debt, like I'm sure you are, but um, you know, it's if they're going to give me money, I might as well take it. Um, and there are a bunch of great rewards cards now that give, um, like I said, one and a half to two percent, which is um, yeah, we haven't seen those levels in, in a few years, and even some without annual fees. Um, like, like Barclay has a new one out, one and a half percent no annual fee. It's just like taking free money. Why not? Right. As long as you use it wisely, if you get something back, yeah, why not? I mean, I'll do it like every now and then, like maybe every year or so. I'll just check in and see how many points I have for like a gift card somewhere, and I'll be able to grab like a, something from The Gap or something from Home Depot, and, and it's virtually free at that point. Yeah, so I haven't actually bought birthday presents for my siblings in years because what I do is I turn in my credit card points for one of my cards for for restaurant gift cards and that's what I give my siblings for their birthdays and it's been great because uh, you get I found with some of these um, credit card rewards programs you get a better value overall value when you go for the gift card as opposed to going for like just the cash back 
or or just the travel rewards, I find that you get a good value for a gift card. So it's been great, uh, a great way to get presents for my siblings' birthdays without, you know, I look like a hero when I haven't had to spend any money. Well, I found even like when you try to buy the products, like some uh, cards will have a, you know, you can buy the product through them, but you end up still getting a better deal with the gift, gift cards. And now with like the electronic uh, cards you get, you know, they just send you an email, here's the code. You don't even have to worry about having the card with you. You can just do all your shopping. You get everything done in a half an hour and you haven't even left your seat. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. And and it depends a little bit on your credit card issuer because um, Amex points are worth a lot, a very, are a lot different than Chase points, for example. So um, I, I like using the travel blogs for this. I'm not, I'm not a point expert, but something like a million mile secrets is a good place to learn what the value of those points are. Um, for example, Chase, I often find it's better to use for travel, whereas my Amex, I prefer to get the cash back on. Mm. Yeah, I mean, travel rewards points. I mean, I think that's a subject for a whole other. That's very uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other day. So, I mean, besides uh, the simple hacking of using credit cards and then stacking up the, the gift cards, I mean, tell us maybe a little bit more about getting discount gift cards. To me, that seems like a, kind of a, a strange thing. I know I see offers for them sometimes. Yes. You know, like uh, you, you could buy like a $100 iTunes card for 85 or something like that, but that's usually through the issuer or maybe iTunes or somebody else, not necessarily, um, I think, the sites that you were talking about. That seems a little different. Yeah, so there, there's something like um, over $40 billion in unused gift cards um, in the United States just sitting in, um, in sock drawers and, and junk drawers. And so there have been a number of sites that have popped up in the last few years, um, like Gift Card Granny or Raise.com, that uh, seeks to pay consumers to get rid of those gift cards. So let's say you got a gift card for Target that you don't want. You would use these sites to sell it. And, and if I'm a shopper who knows I have to uh, buy something at Target, I would buy it from you at a discount. It works well for everybody. I'm going to get to save a little bit of money at Target, and you're going to get to put money in your pocket because you weren't planning to use the gift card anyway. Now, I know you know the Internet has come a long way, um, but I can't help but wonder, like, how, how safe is that? Like, is somebody mailing me their gift card? Like, what's, uh, what's the story on that? Yeah, so I, pr I prefer to use uh, Raise and Cardpool is another good one because you don't have to have any interaction between buyers and sellers. It's all managed um, by the site, which is my favorite way of doing it. You just, um, once you've paid for your gift card, it's instantly sent to you if it's an e-gift card and if it's a, if it's a mail gift card, um, or a physical gift card, they'll mail it to you within, um, I think, five to seven business days. So I guess for somebody who has like a gift card to whatever store that they either don't have near them or they're just never really going to use a, a site like that, is it worth it to get some value out of it even if it's not full value? Yeah. yeah. Go, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I've actually used them to sell. I've never bought before, uh, but, I, but I've sold a couple. Um, just got from friends that, uh, I don't know, if possibly they were re-gifting them would be my guess. Uh, and I just didn't, didn't really like them. Or uh, even for our, our wedding, we got gift cards from uh, to many, many stores that we just simply didn't need. There's only so much kitchen-related uh, stuff that we can put in our cabinets. So, yeah, we sold them. I think the site took... Um, I want to say like a three to five percent commission. Is that sort of in the ballpark there, Kyle? Yeah, it depends on the store. So uh, a, a popular store like Target or, or, or Walmart, you're going to get a really high uh, value back. Um, but if it's something like a, that's not as as well used or as in many locations, like a I don't know, like a J.C. Penney's, you might only you might have to take a twenty percent haircut on the cash value. Wow, but I guess if you never shop at a place, it's better to get something than have it sit in, like you said, in a stock drawer forever. Well, and it's like Kyle said, if he got it from somebody else, it's still, it's still free money in his pocket. Ash in my pocket. That's right. And and as the as a buyer, someone who knows I need to buy something, um, I I want as big a discount as I can possibly get on that gift card. Hmm. Now, one one thing about uh, when you're trying to stack a deal is. Uh, Making sure you're buying whatever you're buying when it's actually on sale or when it's at a good price. Are there sites that you use in order to kind of track that sort of thing? Yeah, um, so that's a great, really good question. So I, I think for comparison wise, I often use, I often find myself using Amazon to see if it's really a good deal or not. Um, but 
to find out whether there are um, things that I can stack on top of that sale, I use a site called Cost Shredder, um, so C-O-S-T, and you just put in where you're going to be shopping, and they automatically spit out all the coupon codes that are available, what credit card would give you the best cash back, and what cash back site you should use to get the most money back. So it sort of does all your homework for you. That's nice. Very cool. Yeah, because I know, like, I mean, I, I try to do that a lot, too. If I know I'm shopping for whatever it is, like, I'll, I'll go to Amazon, I'll check some reviews, I'll check the prices, and I'll, I'll go around, and, and I'll probably end up spending more time than it's worth. Um, but it sounds like if you have a site like that, that certainly makes everything easier. Yeah, especially, yep. and I find it can vary so much with the cashback sites because, uh, you know, Ebates may be offering you 1% cashback, but be frugal might offer you 10% cash back. So I, 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 instead of having to log into all those accounts, I'll let someone else do the work. Now, when you say cash back, like from, from Ebates or be frugal or something, what is that cash back? Like what is that, where do you get that money back? It's not like a credit card that you get it back on your card or in your statement. Uh, they send me a check. So Ebates sends me a check every quarter for all the rebates that I've earned that quarter. And they all work similarly. Some of them pay via PayPal. And how much do you have to actually get back to make that worth it? I mean, are they going to send you like a 75 cent check or is it like you have to hit a $20 uh, threshold or? Yeah, they all have thresholds that vary between, I don't know, I've seen 10 to $25. I think the Ebates threshold is $25 in cash back. Mm -hmm. So you really still have to do somewhat of a significant amount of shopping through them. I mean, unless you're just buying like a refrigerator one day and then a stove the next day and, uh, you know, some other big thing. Yeah, for for a spender like me, that's not a problem. But if, especially around uh, the holidays, I I got a, a a nice fat check coming for me because uh, I put all my Christmas shopping through there. Nice. So uh, you bring up something interesting there. How much does timing over the course of the year uh, affect deal stacking? Well, it it depends on what you want to buy. So. Um, Things go on sale annually um, in different months, so uh, this this time of year is a great time, for example, to buy fitness equipment. Everybody's made those New Year's resolutions, um, so that that kind of stuff is on sale. It's a great time of year to buy winter clothing. Those are it's all going on sale right now, um, as as retailers are getting ready to bring in their spring lines, um, and then you know later in, later in the um, um, in the year like. I, uh, Fall to early early Christmas time is the best time to buy things like toys and electronics. Um, so you sort of have to um, play the calendar there. Yeah, I definitely find like if I need any sort of office supplies, um, back to school is the time to do it because everything all of a sudden turns dirt cheap. And if you wait too long, it's like you hit regular prices again. All of a sudden, paper's expensive and whatnot. Um, and, and I did, so I needed a new backpack, and it was also back to school time, so I was able to get like nice deals and then I had gotten some coupon that helped out and like I really made it a lot cheaper and worth uh, worth the spending than if I had not gone through the trouble that I went through. Yeah. Without explaining so, it, I mean, I hope that makes sense. So, so kind of going back a little bit though, like through the Ebates thing, um, is that another one of those things where you you can you buy through Ebates and you can use your credit card so then you get the reward points plus you get the rebate back? Is that one of those wonderful stacking things that you use? Yeah, exactly right. And hopefully, you're hopefully you have a coupon code or something to use as well. Um, sort of. Nice. <laughs> See, this is the kind of thing I could get into. When you were first coming on, I was like, "Oh gosh, we're gonna do more like couponing." And hey, bring your fifty cent coupon to buy something on sale, and don't forget that manufacturer's coupon. But this is this is definitely something I can get behind. I'm getting excited now. Uh, as Miranda just well, you know, like some of our other guests. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> Talking about being lazy, one thing that I just did this past week that was so awesome is uh, we were we're going on vacation next week to Florida, and we we got a rental car, and so I went on, I I searched around, I thought I found what was a really good deal, so I booked this car rental, and then I discovered this site called uh, Autoslash.com. I don't know if you guys ever checked this out, but basically you just put your confirmation number in for the rental you've already gotten, and then they'll recheck the pricing every day, they basically re do the rechecking for you and then they'll tell you when they found a deal that saves you money. So I already thought I had a good deal, but uh, within a few days they, they sent me a deal that would save me $65 on my rental. So it was like 20% off of my price so that I already thought I had a good deal. So uh, the internet has all sorts of sites like that nowadays where it, it makes it super easy to save money. You don't even have to really do anything. 
they basically just gave you a link. Click on the link, you book it, and they even give you a link to cancel your previous reservation. So it's pretty awesome. That's great. Well, one of the things I've kind of gotten into recently is this whole all of my loyalty programs are like connected now, like with my credit card, with my hotel, with my car rental rewards, and they're all they're all sort of connected and giving me points and discounts and uh, I had one where I had a credit card that was giving me a, a big discount for the car rental, but then getting the car rental actually gave me points with my hotel loyalty program. And so it was like this one thing that just resulted in like an explosion of awesomeness. <laughs> so, I mean, you're talking loyalty. Um, is it worth it, Kyle, to, to sign up for like all the different store offers and, and different loyalties that they have. So like I know for me, like I just talked about buying a backpack. That's the, what got me there was that I had joined um, Eastern Mountain Sports, their mailing list. Yeah. So every now and then they send out coupons and it just happened to be, it was, it was back to school time, plus they had a coupon, plus they had sent me um, like a sort of membership check, you know, for, for what I purchased in the past. So like all those things converge at the same time to make it really worth it. But I know I could get inundated with uh, emails too sometimes from everywhere <laughs> coming in saying, you know, buy this or you know, save this. So, like, yes, is that I, worth doing? Uh, well, I do think it's worth doing, but I, I have a separate email address I use just for shopping online uh, because I, I don't want all, that, all of those emails coming to my regular email and cluttering. Um, plus, what I really like is when I know I need to go buy something, I can go into that email account and quickly search for the for coupon codes in the last 30 days that retailers have sent me, um, and because when if they came to my regular account, they're getting deleted right away. But in that account, they're all nicely stored there, and I have all those coupon code codes, all that rewards information, um, in one place. Yeah, what I found was like I was getting more emails every day, and it seems like the same stores were sending them to me every day. I couldn't even get to my regular emails. I'm just spending all this time either moving into another folder or deleting it. It was really getting ridiculous. But every now and then there is that diamond in the rough where it's like that really is a good deal, and I was looking to do that anyway. Yeah, it's, well, for me as a as a as a guilty impulse buyer, um, I have to have those things away too. Those need to be out of sight so that I can't be tempted um, on every lunch break to <laughs> take advantage. Yeah, yeah. One thing I used. Um, I, I love the, the different uh, email address that certainly works, but I also use a service called uh, unroll.me, unroll me, and I mean it's good to, to unsubscribe to things, but it'll also just take everything that you want and put it together for you and just give you one email. So instead of getting like 50 emails from all over the place, it'll give you just one every day, so you don't have to necessarily see every ad offer that's in there. I like that. So what other uh, hints and, and tips can you give us? Well, I can give you, um, maybe I'll give you an example of a, of a deal we saw today um, at the Penny Hoarder. So, uh, so uh, Kohl's, which is a great place for stacking because they allow you to use um, multiple coupon codes um, and they allow you to use discounted gift cards and all these kind of things. So they had a, they had a Keurig on sale, normally 150 bucks, was on sale for 95 but their their gift cards were selling for 14% um, at, at a discount on Cardpool.com. So we bought a, we bought a Kohl's gift card. We used a 15% uh, off Kohl's coupon. We got free shipping. Plus Kohl's gave us $10 cash back, and we used a cash back engine to get 6% cash back. And so that $150 um, uh, coffee maker all of a sudden only costs uh, sixty eight dollars, and you better believe it's going to get some good use in our office. I, was I thought say, by uh, the end of all that, it was going to be like the the coffee maker arrived with the twenty five dollar check to you <laughs> like at, at the end end of all those coupons there. Just that's take like it. So that's coupon. how the penny hoarder makes money now. We just <laughs> buy stuff, and, and they pay us to, to buy to buy it. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, at that point, you know that. That sixty-five dollars. I mean, you turn that around on eBay, sell it for eighty-five, and you're doing all right. So um, for the last couple of years, I didn't do it this year um, because uh, the penny hoarder was, was a little busy. But I bought hundreds, uh, over a hundred thousand dollars in toys on Kohl's and at a discount, and then resold them on Amazon. Um, so that's been my little side gig the last couple of Christmases. 
That's a lot of toys. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Neiman Marcus Christmas catalog. I'm gonna buy an X-wing fighter life size like price. <laughs> That's like... Yeah, yeah. No, it definitely it definitely caused some strife around the house when I had a thousand Furbies um, in the garage. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's a whole other uh, episode's worth of uh, <laughs> uh, techniques there, I think. <laughs> uh, point being, though, you can yeah, the, those stackings, you can really get it ex- extremely cheap, and if you wanted to, you could you could turn it around and make a profit. Yeah, although, I mean, I'm guessing if, if people really catch on to that too much, that's when it starts to get limited too, right? Well, the thing is, is that it's not the retailer is still making money. So all of these little things, all of these little things are coming from different people. So I'm getting a discount on the gift card that didn't affect the retailer. Um, my credit card cash back didn't affect the retailer. They were going to have to pay credit card processing fees one way or another. So every everybody sort of wins here, um, especially me. <laughs> <laughs> There's like some kind of economic, like velocity of money, sort of a uh, case study in this, where like we're just creating more and more money in the economy. That's, uh, <laughs> like this is a good thing; we should all be doing it. Uh, Pretty soon, comes, we're gonna have like gift Glenn's card Master default Steve swaps does. or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is quite interesting. So, so what else? I mean, um. Is this like all online stuff, or is this stuff that you could go into the store also with? You know, how does that work? Yeah, so the usually the best place for stacking is online because you um, because you can't use the cash back engines um, when you're going into a store. But there are some things you can do um, for store shopping. Um, so there's a couple of new apps out that will pay you to take a picture of the receipt you got from your, from uh, from the retailer. So Abata is one that you can use at the grocery store. If, um, They'll take a picture and they'll give you cash back when you buy specific items. But they also have cash back on um, things that don't even have a brand. So, for example, this week you got 50 cents cash back if you bought a loaf of bread. I mean, we're pro- we probably all are, we're going to buy that. So it's it's a simple way to get a little bit of money. Um, but there's another one called Receipt Pal, which will pay you um, in points. It's not a lot of money. You're not going to make more than 10 bucks a month, but uh, you know, it's just a fun way to take a picture of your seat, and, and they'll give you uh, a little bit extra spending cash. Here in uh, Canada, Checkout 51 does the same thing. It's uh, you, you literally, yeah, you take a picture of your receipt, and uh, I think it's twenty dollar threshold. They'll send you a check back. Yeah, I love Checkout 51 too. In fact, we, um, I often that's another stacking trick I use at the store. Sometimes they have the same rebate, so I can get um, a rebate from both. <laughs> With one receipt. <laughs> now it sounds like it sounds like really if you do just maybe a little bit of homework, you just set up maybe a a system that works. You, you can probably cut some fat off of every purchase. But I could also see this becoming something that's almost dangerous too, where you could really just kind of go crazy. Um, like what does a person need to watch out for? Well, yeah, there's the whole sh- there's a whole show on TLC about <laughs> people who take it too far. <laughs> Um, I th- have a thousand Furbies, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know you've taken it too far when you're buying things you don't need just for the rush. Um, and, <laughs> uh, that, that's when you know you need to stop. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like most people, I think don't know that, and uh, they'll end up buying stuff that they they think they might need, or like the, you feel that that like if I don't buy it today, it's not going to be on sale tomorrow. Like you know. And then if you're doing it on a credit card, I mean, I, this is where I, I think people who aren't fond of using credit cards, maybe they're right in that you, you could just end up charging a bunch of things where it's like, okay, I bought that that uh, ice cream maker, but I never make ice cream, you know, but but it was on sale yeah. and I got a great deal on it, but <laughs> I'm never really going to use Put the it. Put coupon know? down and walk out of the store. Absolutely. <laughs> I've had that. Uh, I've had that problem in the past. Uh, like we have a site here called Red Flag Deals. There's probably similar forums in the states where they're just posting deals after deals, or even something like Groupon. And you see some of these discounts. Like, yeah, I need that, and <laughs> really you don't. But it's it's such a great deal that it's hard to put aside. But you got to remember, it's all this stuff's really marketing programs. They're trying to entice you to spend, and people fall for it when they don't really need to. Yeah. Another thing. In- 
what's interesting is with all these deals that are out there, it really kind of makes you think how much companies are making off of us. You know, like they're making enough profit that all of these deals can go on and they're still doing okay, which I always yeah. found interesting. They do, um, although a lot of times some of the best deals are, are lost leaders. So if, if you sort of know what to look for um, and just and just stick to those and, and, and only stick to them if you actually need the product and you've already budgeted for it, um, you can you can start to walk out ahead. So you really do have to know your own psychology, your own needs, and, uh, and really be able to control yourself. But it sounds like you could do pretty well. I'm sure it's like anything else, like a diet. You still have to have self-control. <laughs> I think that's probably the hardest thing for a lot of people. For, for <laughs> Unfortunately, me as well. absolutely. Um, are, are there just quickly? Are there? Um, you said you can't really get. You don't do as well when you're walking into the store. But I mean, do any of these apps help you with that? Like, is there Ebates that you could use in the store, or is it really more just like kind of after the fact with your receipts? Um, I, I find that. Yes, there are some apps like that, like the receipt apps, and there are some others like uh, like Shopkick, which will pay you to check into stores. Um, but I find that the rewards um, aren't aren't as close, um, and I think it's because that the brick and mortar retailers have a lot higher costs, so they're not able to offer you as big as discounts as as the um, online versions. That makes some sense, and and I guess like a place like a Kohl's or whatever, a Target, when they have those online deals, it's like in their their factory space. It's not the, the individual store that needs to sell it. So they could probably offer a little bit better deal, right? Yeah, exactly. They don't have to pay for, you know, cashier and and the, the retail space and all those kind of things. It's, they, they just they're, they're sometimes they're shipping it directly from from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? This is a lot of great information and uh and I like that we were able to talk about fun ways to save here without, you know, really uh pulling the belt too tight. Uh, which is, I think, what we like to do here at the Money Mastermind Show. Um, I mean, we like to save generally also, too, but uh, we've discovered, I think, over over our episodes that we like to spend a little money here and there. Um, so let's go around, and we'll have a final word on, on deal stacking. So, uh, Tom, what are your final words? Um, just one thing I want to mention. We didn't discuss too much about flyers, and here in Canada, there's a, a site and an app called Flip that's just amazing. It basically brings every flyer available, finds the best deal, for anything from groceries to electronics, anything like that. And uh, it, it, you can basically circle them as if you were circling a real flyer and it'll give you a big shopping list and you can hit the town. So like a flyer, like something that they would roll up and put into your uh, your door like every Sunday or something like that? Yeah, yeah. They're just all all in this one app so that you can you can see everything and, uh, and, and it make makes a customized list. list. For you. That's pretty neat. That is neat. Because I, I tend to usually just throw those things away because I just don't have the patience to go through them anymore. But, uh, <laughs> that's where those loss leaders are. <laughs> yeah, that's too. Peter, what's your final word on deal stacking? Well, it's basically that there's really no excuse to not save money when you're out shopping, whether it's online or in person or whatever. You know, Just make sure you're finding ways that you can stack those deals, whether it's buying items on sale, using store coupons, manufacturer coupons, using apps after the fact or, or like like I did using a, a site after you already purchased something to find a way to get money back or to cancel your reservation and, and get a better deal. So get get online, do your research, and you're going to find tons of ways to save a ton of money. Awesome. Miranda, your final words? Yay, credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Get those rewards. <laughs> if you're going to deal stack, make sure you're buying everything with your credit card and then paying off the balance so that you're not getting charged mm -hmm. interest. But, yes, definitely uh, make sure you're using that credit card. Yeah, I know like with Amex, every now and then they'll just have these offers that you can sign up for where if you spend X amount of money, you just get money back from them, mm -hmm. which is always like that's just awesome if I was going to do this anyway. Easy oh, yeah. stuff. As long as you're not doing it to purposely buy stuff you don't need. But, uh, right, yeah, it's all about keeping it in your budget. I I just spend, well, you know, we've heard this before. I put even my rent on my credit card. So. Yeah, <laughs> love it. And Mr. Why Prevo, not? so we don't get confused with Kyle's, um, what's your final word? 
My final word goes out to Glenn Craig and uh, teachers everywhere. Uh, teachers pay teachers, great, great website. I don't own any uh, shares in it, but it's a great opportunity cost saver if you're a teacher. Where do you want to put your time? Um, you wait for a 28% deal off. They come on about four or five times a year. You can stack that with product reviews, which they'll pay you to do, and then use that uh, Miranda's favorite credit card there. And, uh, yeah, you can end up getting excellent resources for, you know, one sixtieth of an hour uh, wage or something like that. So. Sounds good. And, Kyle, if you'll close out our final word here on deal stacking. Yeah, I'll just say uh, promise yourself the next time you get to that checkout page and you're entering your credit card number, you'll stop and take just an extra 60 seconds and check a site like Penny Hoarder or Cashbackholic and see if there's something you can stack um, to get that thing even cheaper. It's, it's not a lot of extra time, but it'll make such a huge impact on your budget. Awesome. And, and speaking of this Penny Hoarder you speak of, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and, and what you do online? Yeah, sure. So um, the Penny Hoarder is one of the largest personal finance blogs. Um, we set a new record last month. We reached over 10 million uh, readers last month. And our goal is really to put more money in our readers' pockets. So we showcase um, fun and sometimes silly ways to make and save extra money. Um, and we publish anywhere um, from 6 to 10 new ideas every day. Sounds awesome, Kyle. And everybody out there, go out and check it. You could be that 10 millionth and uh, one person <laughs> that gets in there. <laughs> so thank you, Kyle, for joining us. And uh, thank you for providing our listeners with a lot of valuable tips. And everybody out there, until next week, be good with your money. Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Google+.